Hey, what is up guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at the Wavelength 4K video capture card. Now this is the only capture card as far as I've known that Wavelength has produced specifically made for, you know, capturing consoles or maybe for a dual PC setup or a camera. But Wavelength is actually a very trusted company for audio devices, networking gear and other things. But this is the only capture card. Now it's called the HG900U. That's the specific model number. And uh, yeah, I was looking for budget oriented capture devices that I can use to capture my 1440p monitor and this actually exceeds the things that I need and it's actually way lower than the price of any Elgato capture cards but we'll talk more about the pricing later and um, the features and whatsoever I'm gonna start off the video with the unboxing itself so let's head to the unboxing so right in front of you is the box and it actually has a name. What? 4K 60 Hz HDMI Grabber G1 Pro. But as you can see on the side of the box, it says the model number, the HG900U. And behind the box is the full specs of this thing. Now, if you do want to learn more about it, you can just pause the video here and um, yeah, you can look at it. But what actually comes inside the box? Well, as soon as you open up the box, Ta-da! You will see the Wavelength Grabber Pro, whatever they want to call it, but I just call it the HD900U. But we'll talk more about that later. Now, the inclusions. Of course, we're going to get the manual and it shows you how to use the device, yada, yada, yada. We don't need this, so we're going to stop looking at it. You also get an adapter from USB-A to a USB-C. You're also going to get the, of course, USB-C to USB-A, the actual cord itself, not an adapter. And, of course, an HDMI cord, only one. So only going from your console or PC to the capture card itself. Now, with the unboxing out of the way, we can talk about the features and specs of this capture card. Now, it can capture up to 4K 30fps. But when you do plug it in directly on OBS, it'll show the option 4K at 60fps. Now, I'll talk more about this later, but on the official website, it only says 30fps. So now I only have a 1440p monitor, so I only really care about the 1440p spec here, which it can do, by the way, at 60fps. So 4K at 30fps slash 60, 1440p at 60 FPS, 100% sure. And then for those of you who wants very fast paced action games to be recorded for slow motion maybe, or maybe you're using a high end camera, well, you can do 1080p at 120 FPS. So that's good stuff out there. But that's for the capturing. What if I wanna use it for pass through? What can it support? Well, for those of you who doesn't know what pass through means, it basically means from your PC's um, graphics card, it will go to the capture card, and the capture card will relay whatever it can see to your monitor instead of from PC directly to the monitor. So latency here is very important, which by the way, I am very happy to tell you that there's no latency at all. I'm a competitive gamer, kinda, and um, I can actually tell the latency feels. So uh, yeah, good job for Wavelink um, in doing the latency stuff. Anyway, here's the list. You can do 4K at only 60 Hertz, sadly. 1440p at 144 hertz only, and then 1080p at a whopping 240 hertz. Now I know there's already 360 hertz monitor, 540 hertz monitor, but trust me, most of the people who will buy this would probably have 1080p at 240 hertz monitor or um, a 1440p at 144 hertz monitor. So yeah, we can move on. Now let's talk about the connectivity. So for the connectivity, you have, you know, your HDMI in, your HDMI out for the pass through. You have your power and data with the USB-C. And then you got three 3.5 jacks, one for the headphone jack, one for a line in, and then one for a mic in, which is all great. The features, the software features, it actually allows for HDR10. So if you have an HDR certified monitor, it can actually convert it into SDR as far as the website says. Now, I cannot test that personally because I don't have any HDR monitors around me. So you would have to trust the website for that. When it comes to the variable refresh rate, it works because I do own an AMD FreeSync Premium monitor and um, it does work well, especially with a pass-through or even just the device itself. You can actually enable VRR. Now, for those of you who doesn't know, VRR can be for both FreeSync or G-Sync. So if it works for my FreeSync monitor, if you have a 
graphics card that is made by NVIDIA or NGREDIA, <laughs> you can actually use um, the feature as well. So now, when it comes to the caller, it actually supports both YUI 2 and NV12. Now, most of you would probably don't really care about this. So to keep it short, this is the difference between YUI 2 and NV12. And um, yeah, if you just want to look for the best possible color and quality, just choose YUI 2. Now let's talk about the setup. So basically, from HDMI to my PC, going to the capture card, then from the capture card, it goes to the monitor via the pass-through. And then of course, I got my USB-C um, into the laptop, which is my capturing device. And uh, I just open an OBS video capture card and you're good to go. This is very flexible. Everything that you see on your main monitor is also seen by the capture card. And there's no added FPS whatever because of the application on the Windows. Or if you're using console, this is the only option you have anyway. And um, yeah, everything is good. Except for the fact that if I don't turn on the capture card via the power of the laptop, my capturing device, I also won't be able to see anything from my monitor. So I'm just letting you know that's how basically all capture card works unless you do some other fiddly power stuff. Um, but with all of that said, we can talk about the video quality. And we are back again at this game, Apex Legends. So before I tell you anything else, what you're seeing right now is the raw recording of OBS from the main PC without the capture card. But in a bit, I'll be showing you how it looks like in the capture card. So I just want to tell you guys that I always use Apex Legends for kind of like a semi benchmark for the capture cards because there's a lot of movement, some textures and a lot of colors and you know just dynamic brightness and contrast. So this game is a, a really good game to benchmark how things look like in the screen. Anyway, here, I'll be switching to the capture card. So what you're seeing right now is the capture card. Now I'm going to tell you what settings I'm using for the recording. So. I'm using 1440p at 60fps and the format is HEVC. Now um, we're just going to move around here and in 3, 2, 1, what you're seeing right now is kind of like a split view of the, of the screen of both the, um, the recording on OBS and also the one from the capture card from the main PC. I can't do any movements in Apex anymore. Like I used to do a lot of movements, this is one of the game that I mostly played the highest rank that I've gotten was masters but I got zero skills for the movements now well anyway I think this is um, where I'm gonna sum it up you can be the judge but honestly the capture card is just great so um yeah let's let's at least try to hit one super glide there you go now what are my final thoughts about this capture card well, first of all, variable refresh rate works great. So for those of you who doesn't like tearing, then yeah, give this one a thumbs up. Now, 1440p 60fps is smooth, although the 4K 30 slash 60fps isn't really that clear. So right now we are on Fragpunk, which is a new FPS title, but we are playing on 4K right now. So I've told you guys I don't have a 4K monitor, so I thought I would not be able to test the 4K capabilities of this capture card. But um, I was able to duplicate the capture card and my monitor. So now my monitor thinks it's actually on 4K. So yeah, we're just in this game. We're just going to be moving around a little bit. And um, I'm playing on 60 hertz on my monitor right now. And so is the capture card. I have it currently set on 4K 60 FPS on OBS. Although what I found is that I cannot set it to 4K if I have YOY2 enabled only on NV12. So this is on NV12 right now. And um, yeah, you guys can be the judge of how the 4K quality is. I think it is okay, but I can see a lot more tearing um, through the capture card. But yeah, let's, uh, let's move on to the video. But yeah, I really trust the 4K claim at 30 FPS because it's on the Wavelink, Wavelink website. So uh, now the temperature is amazing. Yeah, I never experienced any heat latency lag whatsoever. Um, some capture cards, when they're used for a couple of hours, they've been on, they've been capturing towards the, the capturing device. Um, they kind of, kind of lag stutter from time to time. I haven't really experienced that with this one. Oh, and of course, the quality of it, you can barely tell the difference between the one that you're seeing 
or the game itself versus the one that is being, you know, passed to your capture card to your capturing PC. Now, one small issue, as I've stated earlier, although most graphics or sorry, capture card has this issue, is that you would have to turn on your capturing device to power the actual capture card for it to output back to your monitor. Now, another small issue is if you're doing that, you know, the pass through um, when your PC goes to sleep at random times, sometimes your monitor turns on and off. You might have to replug the USB-C because the capture card doesn't always recognize when your monitor is actually back on. When it comes to the price on the Wavelink's website, it says 150 USD, which is, by the way, a big lie because if you search it anywhere, Amazon, Lazada, or other online stores, it would probably tell you that it costs around 65 US dollars. So um, that's a big price difference. So if you're thinking of buying an Elgato capture card that can only do 1080p at 60fps, I think I'm a little outdated with the Elgato stuff. They probably have introduced a new one. But for the most part, it's like one third of the price of those companies. So if you want to learn more about dual PC setup, wherein I actually use this capture card because I don't really use a console, or another camera to use the capture card for. I use it for dual PC specifically. If you want to learn more about it, you can check out my YouTube channel. I have a video about it already. The easiest dual PC setup that you would ever need. Yeah, you can hit that like button, subscribe, share this video with your friends. Thanks so much you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.